Jay Quellen. No Jay Quellen here? Balake. Where is Balake at? A.A. Ron. A.A. Ron is right here. Thanks for joining me, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Guys, I want to dip back into the well that is the two-hour interview that Patrick Bet David did with Mike Rinder. Patrick had Mike on to promote Mike's new book, A Billion Years. The whole two-hour interview uh, is fantastic and mesmerizing, but at the very end, Patrick hit Mike with a, a question that's one of the most common questions that comes up, which is, if everything we hear is true, if this organization is so bad, why doesn't the FBI just raid them and shut them down? Now, in my last live Q&A, I answered this question right in the beginning by saying, well, the FBI did raid them, and 11 senior Scientologists went to prison, but that was decades ago, and the question still stands today. If all the abuses we hear about are still going on, why, is it, why doesn't the FBI raid them again? I want to play for you Mike's answer to this question question. This answer is only like four or five minutes long. Let's listen to Mike's answer and then let's discuss. The, the one question that gives them a, a lot of uh, credibility is if, if it's such a bad organization, how come the FBI hasn't, if the FBI can raid uh, Mar-a-Lago and get access to papers and stuff like that, and they can go to all these, who was the congressman we had on, Scott, uh, Scott Perry, and they went to his door in August and hey, hand us your phone and has all the text messages, communication. If this organization is so bad, how come the government's not worried about them? Well, they are. They're, I mean, I, I, you can't say that the government is not worried about them. Are they and have they acted? Hmm. There is a big problem that the government has acting against Scientology or two big problems. One, the money that they have to hire lawyers that will mean it will drag on forever. And two, the fact that they hide behind the First Amendment. There, I talk in the book about when we were trying to get exemption from the IRS and the impact that Waco had on government agencies go yeah, being willing to go after even fringe, kooky, you know, crazy religious organizations and how badly they got burned and how that had an impact on their willingness to grant exempt status to Scientology. And, you know, these factors have been used by Scientology very smartly to prevent things. When the, IRS, when the FBI was doing an investigation in Los Angeles in 2009, 2010 into human trafficking, they went and hired the former AUS attorney for the Southern District of California who had left and went and schmoozed and said, you know, you don't want to get involved in this sort of uh, case with Scientology. And every government agency has to make decisions and particularly law enforcement has to make decisions about where do they devote their resources. Are they going to go after the drug smugglers or are they going to go after the, quote, religion? Are they going? And a lot of it has to do with what is politically expedient, what's going to look good in the media, and you talk about Mar-a-Lago or whatever. Those decisions get made with a lot of other factors Outside of just, is this something that justice should be served with or not? Hmm. There are political, financial, PR, the, all these agencies have all these factors that go into this. And unfortunate, I, I mean, I keep saying every, well, you know, Leah and I have said a hundred times, when will the government finally act? Okay, very interesting. I think um, it's, it can be also easy to lose sight of the fact that when you talk about why doesn't the FBI do X, Y, and Z, is the FBI are essentially the police of the federal government. The FBI investigates, collects evidence, and puts a case together. The FBI does not make the decision about whether to prosecute a case or not. And that's where Mike starts talking about the US attorneys and the AUS attorneys, is that it really comes down to, does the US attorney have the political will, uh, the desire to go after Scientology or not? 
And as Mike says, a lot of things go into these decisions other than just, is this something justice should be served in? And to the degree that Scientology is able to use its lobbying dollars and um, and lobbyists might, might sometimes be the wrong word, right? Because you go, Scientology can hire a retired judge to work on its behalf or, or maybe even hire them in the capacity of, uh, of their ostensibly hiring them as a lawyer, but they're essentially working as a lobbyist. As long as Scientology is able to use its money and, and to purchase influence in circles that pull weight with US attorneys, Scientology will be to that degree protected. However, uh, that strength is also their primary weakness. The moment that Scientology is confronted by a US attorney who really wants a bite at that apple, they're screwed because the FBI is not the weakest link in this conversation about why hasn't the government done something about Scientology. And I'm gonna say what I've been saying a lot lately, which is that what will bring Scientology down, what, what the thing will be that will bring Scientology down is the financial fraud, the credit card fraud, the bank fraud, the stuff that's cut or dry and does not require the government to interpret religious scripture, blah, blah, blah. Even charges relating to labor trafficking or human trafficking uh, require the court to, to some degree or another, wade into interpreting what is or is not religious practice, um, what's a religious volunteer, what, what are religious punishments, and, and all this kind of stuff. And the courts just don't like going there. But when it comes to the numbers, the financials, the dollars and the cents, that's the stuff the government uh, can run with all day long. And Scientology's hands over the last, uh, let's say, was it 2014, 2015? So the last five, six, seven years have just been absolutely filthy with credit card fraud and bank fraud and wire fraud. And you can't claim religious exemption or religious protection when it comes to breaking those kinds of laws. And while I'm on that subject, for any of you out there watching, former Scientologists or soon to be former Scientologists, if you are one of these people who Scientology opened up tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars in credit cards um, and did it, uh, did it for you on your behalf by submitting fraudulent information and maxed the cards out and gave the money to Scientology and you ended up defaulting on the debt, or if you're one of those people for whom Scientology came to you and convinced you to uh, take on tens of thousands of dollars of debt for other Scientologists who then defaulted on that debt, please contact me. Contact me, just email me at growingupinscientology at gmail.com because I have attorneys I can refer you to who have never failed in getting refunds, settlements, punitive um, payments from Scientology on these financially fraudulent transactions. And especially if you're over the age of 65 and Scientology has um, done anything fishy with you on credit cards, please contact me. I can introduce you to lawyers who will get you your money back and more. And I promise you that when we uh, at the Aftermath Foundation are helping people who are escaping from Scientology and rebuilding their lives from scratch, when we are helping people who have firsthand experience or who have been victims of this kind of fraud, we absolutely encourage them to take their stories and their evidence to the appropriate law enforcement agencies. And I'm telling you guys, it is only a matter of time before Scientology is prosecuted. And once those prosecutions occur, it will then be over to the IRS or over to Congress to demand that the IRS review and revoke Scientology's tax-exempt status. It's only a matter of time, guys. David Miscavige, known worldwide as uh, the world's shortest cult leader, but the world's tallest Keebler elf, has some very rough years ahead of them, and it is my pleasure to contribute to making those years as rough as they possibly can be. Now, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget uh, Mr. Mike Rinder, who's in this interview. He is also one of the board members of the Aftermath Foundation. And as a little bit of a joke, uh, about a year ago, we made these Mike Rinder bobbleheads. Are these guys adorable or what? And we made these, again, it was sort of a joke, to raise money for the Aftermath Foundation. So if you'd like to get one of these, go to thespshop.com, 
100% of the proceeds from that website go to support the Aftermath Foundation. Oh, and I did this a few videos ago. Let's do it again. Whatever comment on this video gets the most likes, I will ship you one of these Mike Rinder bobbleheads. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching and listening. I really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, yeah, then you could click right in sight here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye! -bye.